busy, guys. We are going to be going over the answers for our 4.4 guided reading here. Um, you should have this pulled up so you can then follow along, double check your answers, or change anything that you need to. All right, so this using targeted reading skills, we're just kind of looking at the process of protein synthesis and summarizing what it is. Um, it provided the first two steps for you. So step one is that DNA provides the code the form messenger RNA. Um, so this is where the DNA unzips into the two strands. Then messenger RNA attaches to the ribosomes. Um, your next step is that transfer RNA um, then attaches to the messenger RNA. Um, so that messenger RNA is what has that message or the information. The transfer RNA is what's transferring those new bases to create the new strand or um, to create proteins, rather. And then our last step is that protein production continues um, once stop code is received or you could say once the stop code is received um the ribosome releases protein okay um you can summarize this a little bit different but that is the process so that dna unzips to form the messenger rna that messenger rna strand then attaches to a ribosome to start working through the transfer RNA brings the new bases to read and produce um, those amino acids which attach together and produce that protein. Then it continues until that stop code is received so the entire protein is created to um, be used. Once you get into the genetic code then you are highlighting the letter of each sentence that is true about genes, chromosomes, and proteins. So you should have highlighted A highlight that here and B so genes control the production of proteins in an organism cells and then proteins help determine the size shape and other traits of that organism question two what are the four nitrogen bases that make up a DNA model uh, molecule it's adenine thymine guanine and and three, what is the genetic code? This is a code based on the order of nitrogen bases that are along a gene that specifies what type of protein will be produced. Question four then is one group of three nitro nitrogen bases codes for one amino acid. So they are in groups of three. Then when you get down to how cells make proteins, for five during protein synthesis, the cell uses information from a gene on a chromosome to produce a specific protein. And then proteins are made on ribosomes, which are in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, so that DNA first unzips and creates the messenger RNA in the nucleus of the cell. Then that messenger RNA is released into the cytoplasm where it attaches to those ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Then you had to complete this Venn diagram comparing DNA and RNA. Um, you guys should have a few different uh, pieces of information, but if you click on this, I'm gonna go through here and give um, you the different comparisons. So DNA by itself is made of the bases thymine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine. 
whereas RNA has thymine, adenine, uracil, and cytosine. Or and guanine, sorry. Then another comparison is that DNA is a double strand or that double helix, whereas RNA is a single strand. And I have a third comparison. The sugar that makes up DNA is called deoxyribose, whereas the sugar that makes up RNA is just ribose. Then some similarities they do have um, is that they both store genetic information. Okay, so we're going to save and close that. You should have this information. Um, if you had something different added, that's perfect. Um, you guys can make sure you still have that in. If you needed to add any more, you can take this information as well. Then if we go down to eight, you're looking at the two um, different RNA types. So you should have messenger RNA and then there's transfer RNA. So messenger RNA copies the coded message from the DNA in the nucleus. And transfer RNA carries amino acids to the ribosomes and adds them to the growing protein. Going into question 9 and 10, um, you just have to highlight the letter of the first step in protein synthesis and then highlight the letter of the last step in protein synthesis. Um, you can look, I told you to look at the pictures um, in the textbook or you can look back at that um, flow chart we did at the beginning. But the first step um, in protein synthesis is that DNA unzips to direct the production um, of a strand of messenger RNA. The last step of protein synthesis is that the protein chain grows longer as each transfer RNA molecule adds an amino acid. Then we get to our last section on mutations. Um, we will be getting into this a little bit after we go through protein synthesis and just kind of work through how that all is created. Um, but a mutation is considered any change in a gene or chromosome. So this relates to protein synthesis um, because it affects what happens. So mutations can cause a cell to produce an incorrect protein, right? So then when that protein's created incorrectly, it affects what the body does and how it responds. So this changes the trait, so it may be different. Um, again, we will get into this and kind of look at the different ways that a mutation can occur um, and the different ways that it can affect protein synthesis later. Question 13 then, you are highlighting the letter of each sentence that is true about mutations. Um, so some mutations occur when one nitrogen base is substituted for another, um, and some mutations occur when the chromosomes don't separate correctly during meiosis. Um, there's a couple other ways that mutations can occur. They can separate or substitute the bases, they can add a base in, or they can actually like delete the base. So you're going to have that gap or an addition that changes um, the order in the process. So mutations can be a source of genetic variety. And then question 15 is the following sentence, true or false? All mutations are harmful. If you read through um, the end of section 4.4 here, this is 
false, um, some mutations are harmful, some are actually helpful, and some are neutral. So they don't really do anything. Um, the important thing is, like question 16 is asking mutations that are considered helpful improve an organism's chance of survival and reproduction. So then in the opposite way, um, a mutation that's harmful is going to do the opposite thing. It's going to reduce the chances for survival and reproduction. So it's going to cause issues with the organism. Then question 17, whether a mutation is harmful or helpful, depends partly on an organism's environment. Um, depending on where the organism lives, um, the mutation could be helpful or it could cause an issue with how it, you know, survives, gets water, gets food, things like that. Um, once you are done with these guided reading notes, please make sure they are submitted and then you are good to go.